Okay, before we get started, everybody have their appearance slips turned in that on an agenda item or public comment that they want to talk on. Okay, we're going to get started here. Uh, it's 8.30. I call this Sawyer County uh, Zoning Committee meeting to order. Uh, Kathy, can we have a roll call, please? Ron Buckholz. Here. Stacy Hessel. Here. Tweet Schumann. Here. Kay Wilson. Here. John Righeimer. Here. Thank you. Okay. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, I know. We got to have breaks on them. Okay, statement of uh, committee hearing procedures and statement of hearing notice. The full statement of committee hearing procedure documents, including directions for the individuals wishing to speak at a public hearing to be conducted at this zoning committee meeting are available in the back of the room next to the agendas for today's meeting. The statement of committee hearing procedure documents is here incorporated into the record for this committee meeting and any public hearing uh, conducted at today's committee meeting has been published in a class two notice in accordance with chapter 985 of the Wisconsin statutes in the Wisconsin or in Sawyer County record and the Sawyer County Gazette. Okay, number E, we need approval of the February 16th meetings, please. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. I'll second that motion. A motion by Ms. Hessel and a second by Mr. Buckholz to approve the February 16th minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. A public comment. Please note that that time is intended for general public. Uh, comments, not comments related to a specific item application before this committee. Each agenda item requiring public hearing will have its public hearing conducted just prior to the application being considered by the committee. If you wish to speak on a specific agenda item, hold your comments until that time. Okay, do we have any, what do you want to speak on public comment? Go ahead, state your name. And you have three minutes. Good morning, Linda Zilmer, resident of the village of Birchwood and Edgewater uh, property taxpayer. And um, wanted to remind the staff and the committee that the last time that the zoning committee bylaws or rules were updated, there is a provision in there that um, any advice provided by uh, an attorney or outside counsel for you should be included in the minutes. And um, I don't know that that's really been followed. I've raised the issue before, but especially today, uh, I would uh, like to remind folks that uh, please include any attorney advice into the minutes for today's proceeding. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, does anybody else want to, wishing to speak in public comment? All right, JJ number three. Uh, just, um, was there anyone online that had public comments? Sorry about that, yeah. Not seeing any hands raised there. Okay. Uh, for rezone applications, it's the public hearing in the town of Hayward, rezone number 24-003, owner Kenneth and Janelle Disher, part of the Northwest One Quarter of the Northwest One Quarter, section 36, township 41 North, range nine west, tax ID 13400, property is zoned forestry one, it is 40 total acres. Purpose of the request is to rezone the entire 40 acres from forestry one to residential one. Um, when the application was initially submitted, the intention was for subdivision um, for residential buildings. That may have changed. We can certainly hear from the applicant uh, further on to those aspects. Uh, as part of my staff report, again, the purpose of the request is to rezone the entire 40 acres from forestry one to residential one. Uh, with approval of the rezone, uh, the applicant would need to proceed with either a certified survey map or a subdivision plat for additional lots in this area. 
I do believe the current request right now is for a two acre subdivision uh, to place a house on. And then um, I, I'm not sure if additional plans have been um, finalized for the remaining 38 acres. Uh, the shoreline wetland overlay district is not subject to change as part of this request. Um, as the current property sits with current zone district, the parcel could still be divided into four separate 10 acre lots through a certified survey map process. In conversations with the owner, they are currently looking at dividing off that two acre parcel in the Northwest quarter, which would be for a future home site for their son. Per the F1 zone district requirements, it would need to be a minimum of five acres and 300 feet of width. Thus the zone district change is being requested to R1 per the smaller lot requirements. With approval of the rezone, there is no additional future plans, uh, at least as of now for future subdivision outside the two acre piece, but the request is still for the entire 40 acres as future additional lot splits may be proposed. The Town of Hayward shows this area as rural transitional or RT as defined by the Town of Hayward comprehensive plan. Uh, it is to identify certain lands in proximity to developmental areas and to preserve mainly forested areas and open space uses until such time as more intensive development may be appropriate. Areas within the RT classification shall be transitioned and new development shall be limited in accordance with all town policies, including highway corridor districts. Appropriate Sawyer County base zone districts within the RT for future land use include the R1 zone district and the town does not require an amendment to their future land use maps um, as the town would determine whether or not is it appropriate for more intense development. Uh, the current surrounding use is light residential and forestry with other R1 zone property, properties immediately to the north and east. There are several wetland complexes that exist on this property. Again, the shoreline wetland overlay district is not subject to change as part of this request and they would still need to abide by all DNR wetland fill requirements and Sawyer County zoning shoreline, one, shoreline wetland protection ordinances for wetland setbacks. As action by the town board motion was approved. Uh, I don't see any additional comments with that sign for in hand. Town Clerk, there were 10 additional notification letters sent out to adjacent property owners. Uh, one was returned with objections. Um, did the committee have an opportunity to read that objection from a Don Feaster? Um, seeing and hearing the committee recognized that they had opportunity to read that uh, um, opinion letter or that notification letter. Uh, therefore, is incorporated into the record. That is all. Okay. Uh, we need a motion to go into public hearing on rezone number 24-003. Mr. Schumann. I'll make a motion. Chairman. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Schumann and a second by Ms. Wilson to go into public hearing on rezone number 24-003. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. We are now in public hearing. Is the applicants here? You want to step forward to the mic, state your name and address, please, for the committee. Good morning. I'm Ken Disher, uh, 10853 Country Club Lane in Hayward here. Hold on a second. I don't know who that is. All right. Okay. There you go. I'm sorry. Ken Disher, 10853 Country Club Lane, Hayward. Um, I'm intending to break off a 2.6 acre parcel in the northeast corner of this uh, 40 acre parcel uh, for a home project. Um, with the adjoining properties being residential, when I looked at the process, it looks like the process is the same whether I do 40 acres or 2.6 acres. So I thought I would do the entire thing and over time add some additional lots probably on that north boundary as there's uh, power, natural gas, and a road to that portion of this 40 at this time. So really for today, um, my intentions are really to develop the one CSM. I do have it surveyed. Um, it's nearly ready to present. Um, I think that's all I have. Okay. Anybody got any questions you want to ask? Yeah, I do. Uh, Mr. Disher, are there any other structures on this property right now? There is that a none. building on the north edge or what is that? Yeah, there is not at this time. There was two greenhouses and a shed. Um, it basically, actually, you can see the two greenhouses in the corner there. They are yeah. both completely gone, and uh, 
cleaned up. And the farmer who put the greenhouses up is not the guy who cleaned them up. <laughs> Understand. Uh, there is that, a, that's where your access road comes in then? Up on that exactly. It's right along the north boundary. Um, and there is a well right between those two, two greenhouses we will utilize, hopefully, for this house project as well. Thank you. Hey. I had a question. Why 2.6 and not just stay with 5? Um, I've owned 60 acres there for about 30 years, and it's really a, um, a playground for me. And this house, whether my son lives there or turns it over, I'm, I'm hoping to give away the least of that wooded land as possible with the sale. Okay. The, I guess the other reason, is if I do continue the road on that north boundary, um, I can get a couple lots on that boundary without affecting the acreage to the south. It's kind of been a 30 year uh, pondering. But. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, is there anyone out there that wants to speak in favor of this result? Is there anyone out there that wants to speak in opposition of the rezone? Okay, we need a motion to come out of public hearing on rezone uh, number 24-003. So moved. We have a motion by Ms. Wilson, a second by Ms. Hessel to come out of uh, public hearing on rezone number 24-003. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. We are now out of public hearing. This is the discussion action, Town Hayward, rezone number 24-003, owner Kenneth and Janelle Disher. Legal description is previously read into record. Request is to rezone the entire 40 acres from Forestry 1 to Residential 1. Okay, Mr. Schumann. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve rezone 24-003. Um, including Jay's staff report and the findings of facts. I'll I got a I'll second. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Schumann and a second by, well, we have a tie there. We'll give it to Mr. Righeimer. <laughs> um, I'm just looking, Chairman, on the findings of facts here. Does 14 really apply, Jay? No, I'm seeing the findings yeah. of facts. Generally, they're not going to always apply to every situation. Okay. Um, so if, if you wanted to, you know, omit 14 from your findings of facts, you certainly can. Yeah, I think I'd like to because it's not. Okay. It's not use of public funds. Okay. Do you have that, Kathy? Yes, I do. Yep. All right. Any more discussion? Not roll call, Kathy. Ron Buckholz. Yes. Stacy Hessel. Yes. Kay Wilson. No. Tweed Schumann. Yes. John Righeimer. Yeah. Four to one. All right. Pass. Thank you. All right. Number C. Yeah. Moving on. This is the rezone, or I'm sorry, this is the public hearing in the town of Draper, rezone number 24-004, owner Jeffrey Hunt and Diane Krozenek. Uh, Village of Loretta, lots 14 and 15 and 13, all in block three of section three, township 39 North Range 4 West, uh, parcel 0061460314001300, and one three zero zero, which is tax IDs 5746 and 5745. Both are zoned residential one. It is a total of 1.308 total acres. The request is to rezone the entire 1.308 total acres from residential one to commercial one to create an auto repair shop. This would be as per section 17.6 of the Sawyer County Zoning Ordinance for commercial use, which would then be a permitted use per the commercial zone district. As part of my staff report, uh, again, this is a request to rezone 1.308 acres from residential one to commercial one. As per the applicant's statement, this would be to operate an auto repair shop. It would be a good thing for the community. I would have jobs for others. I plan on keeping my property cleaned up. The auto repair shop would be located on this property and would be a permitted use per the C1 zone district. Um, as part of the attached maps included in the packet, the property is currently surrounded by R1 zone property in all directions, approximately 172 feet to the south. There is a larger strip of commercial zone property that follows the Highway 70 corridor. 
Uh, with that information, this would not be viewed as spot zoning. Uh, the future land use map for the town of Draper shows this area as rural residential. Rural residential is defined by the town of Draper comprehensive plan are areas where the town has seen growth in residential development and is anticipated to continue to see this activity. Um, again, as part of that staff report, the findings of facts are also listed there uh, by action of the town board. Um, and let me get my zoom to the right spot here. Uh, it's by action of the town board, motion was denied. Uh, Richard Burt, chairman, Steve Bining, um, supervisor, Tim Kelly, supervisor. Uh, they went through the findings of facts here as well, um, that it was not to promote public health, that it did not encourage planned and orderly development of land use, uh, that it does not protect property values and property tax base, uh, not applicable to um, and I'll just bring up my findings of facts, not applicable to number four, five, and six, uh, that it was not, that it does not encourage the use of lands and other natural resources, which are in accordance with their character and applicability, um, not applicable to eight, that it does not encourage the protection of groundwater resources, not applicable to 10, not applicable to 11, uh, that it does not protect the beauty and amenities of the landscape and man-made developments, that it does not provide healthy surroundings for family life and not applicable to 14. The findings of facts are either all no or not applicable. Uh, objections of two adjacent property neighbors. R1 zoning protects from uh, incompatible uses, inconsistent with town comprehensive plan, environmental concerns, fire hazard concerns, plan commission recommends denial, town board recommends denial. Signed Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Klein, town clerk. There were... 14 additional notifications sent out to adjacent property owners. Uh, two were returned in objections, two with no objections. Did the committee get a chance to read those four letters that were sent to you previously? Yes. <clears throat> uh, the committee acknowledges that the four that were sent to them previously have been read. Those four, therefore, are incorporated in the record. We did have one late submission that I'd like to read into record. This is from William Heath. As a resident of the town of Draper, I am a construction and home builder, and I am zoned commercial. Mr. Hunt has no neighbor within 300 feet, and his small body shop is all compliant with um, exhaust emissions uh, and would probably employ one or two people. So for those reasons, I am all for business. Thank you, Bill Heath. That is all. Okay, thank you, Jay. All right, need a motion to go into a public hearing on rezone number 24-004. We have a motion by Ms. Hessel, second by Mr. Schumann to go into a public hearing on rezone number 24-004. All in favor say aye. Aye, aye. All opposed, motion carries. We are now in public hearing. Is the applicant here? Could you come speak to the committee, please? Um, I'm, I'm Jeff Hunt. Um, I built this shop a year and a half ago. Um, my intentions were to have this shop just for my own use. Um, then I had people stopping in, neighbors were stopping in, and they're saying to me, well, why, why don't you open up a shop, you know? And, and I'm like, okay, I'll give it a shot. So before I knew it, people were stopping in, and I was doing their work on people's vehicles, and now I'm trying to get rezoned so that I can keep on going. Um, I can hire a couple of people. Um, I plan on putting up a big pole shed to keep um, extra additional vehicles inside so that my property looks clean. Um, I don't see where there's a problem. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of people in town that really wants to shop. I mean, Loretta is a dying town, and a lot of people are driving miles to get their vehicles work done. And a lot of people would like to see this. You're already working out of that shop? I was up until the 9th of, 9th of um, February. I was shut down. Okay. Right. Anyone else got questions for him? Schumann? Yeah, can I can I ask you, sir, why the town board denied it? Or did um, they give an explanation or um I got I got a couple of neighbors that are complaining. Um they, they don't like me. Um they did like me up until a year ago. Um it's kind of a a, a petty story to have to say, but 
Um, the neighbors that are against me, I got along with them just fine up until a year and a half ago over something else that happened with another neighbor. So that's what's going on. All right. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else have any questions for him? John? Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone out there that would like to speak in favor of this rezone? Is there anyone out there that would like and speak in opposition to this rezone? We do have a hand raised online from okay. Steve Bain. Go ahead. Hey, Ron, Hi, Steve. committee. Thanks. Hi. Steve Bain, Town of Draper Supervisor. Sorry, we might have a little audio delay here, but I'll lower my hand. Uh, so in our plan commission and also our town board discussion, uh, a, a couple of elements came up that were recurring, uh, specifically to the occupancy type. As an auto body shop, there's there's special statutes in the state statute along salvage yards with the numbers of vehicles and also the chemical types. Um, I'm also in entry level fire training and uh, auto body shops were listed as a high hazard. So so we deem that in a residential area that that may be an elevated exposure risk for for neighbors. So. That and our comprehensive plan were probably the two large driving factors of us making that decision. That was at the plan commission level a five zero against, and at the board level a three zero against. Um, I guess I'd also not like to note I don't want to call out citizen comments, but if you can see from that map, obviously three hundred feet gets you past a couple of other properties there, right? Okay. Hey, hey. thanks. What's that, Steve? Thanks. Okay. I just said, hey, thanks for the time. All right, you're welcome. All right, anyone else out there want to speak in opposition of this rezone? Okay, if none, I need a motion to come out of public hearing on rezone number 24-004. We have a motion by Ms. Wilson, a second by Ms. Hessel to come out of rezone Public hearing on 24-004, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carried. We are now out of rezone. This is the- or public hearing, sorry. Yep, this is the discussion action, the town of Draper, rezone number 24-004, owner Jeffrey Hunt. Legal description is previously read into record. The request is to rezone 1.308 acres from residential one to commercial one, uh, which would then uh, permit as a permitted use for an auto repair shop in the commercial zone district. Okay, committee, um, we've heard the opinion letters. We've heard from the comprehensive plan. We've heard from the town board. What's your desire? And any motion you make, please put your finding of facts in it. Can I have one discussion question before we make a motion, Chairman? Yes. Jay, is this consistent with their comprehensive plan of that area? It, it is. I know they voted 5-0 to deny, correct? Correct. Yep. Um, so their, their comprehensive plan commission uh, voted 5-0. Their town board is a three-member panel. They also voted 3-0 uh, to deny. As part of their comprehensive plan, I do have a map included in the packet here. It's kind of difficult to tell, but there's some small little red right along the highway and that small little red is commercial, but as you get further north, it goes back to the yellow, which is shown as rural residential included as part of their future land use maps. Uh, so it is at that point as of right now with their current comprehensive plan inconsistent. I'd like to make a motion to deny this uh, rezone request. <laughs> based on findings of fact one through 13, excluding 10, honoring the comprehensive plan committee and the town board vote. I'll Three second words. that. We have a motion by Ms. Wilson and a second by Mr. Righeimer to deny the rezone number 24-004. Any more discussion? Okay, roll call, Kathy. Stacy Hessel. Kay Wilson. Tweet Schumann. Ron Buckholtz. Yes. John Righeimer. Yeah. All in favor. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, moving on, we are into the conditional use permit portion. This is a public hearing in the town of Hayward. Conditional use permit number 24-007, owner Hayward Demo LLC and Select Land Holdings LLC. Uh, take a deep breath here. This is part of the southwest one quarter of the southeast one quarter of lots one through four on CSM number 1195. Uh, tax ID 13079, which is 6.97 total acres zone commercial one. Also includes part of the southwest one quarter, the southwest one quarter, and the northwest one quarter of the southwest one quarter for lot A on CSM number 1196, which is tax ID 13123, which is 3.23, I'm sorry, 3.26 total acres zone industrial one. Part of the northwest one quarter, the southwest one quarter for lots one through four of CSM number 1154, tax ID 13118, which is 19.2 total acres zone forestry one and industrial one. The northwest one quarter of the northwest one quarter of section 32 township 41 north range 9 west tax id 13105 which is 40 total acres zone forestry one um, we also have tax id 40450 which is 13.74 total acres zoned agricultural one uh, permit is desired for the early renewal of a non-metallic mineral extraction operation including rock crusher the early renewal is requested is that there is a change of owner and operator as well as a change in the plan of operation. This conditional use permit was originally approved at a public hearing on May 18th, 2011. As part of my staff report, again, this is the early renewal and this would be for a five year renewal for the location operation of a non-metallic mineral extraction operation, including rock crusher and hot mix plant. Um, it was most recently renewed just two months ago, back in January of 2024. Uh, the property is approximately 83.17 total acres with crushing, I'm sorry, with, um, with mining occurring on approximately 17 acres. Additional expansion of approximately 5.5 acres per year is anticipated over the next five years with reclamation occurring within opening, uh, with opening of new areas. Approximately 50,000 cubic yards of material is to be extracted per year. This has increased per the last conditional use permit case um, where there was only a two acre expansion and 30,000 cubic yards planned over the next five years. The surrounding use is forestry and light residential and other non-metallic mining operations within that area. Uh, the nearest house is approximately 500 feet away. Any crushing operation or hot mix plant operation would need to be located at a minimum of 1,000 feet away from any residents. The zoning department does not show any complaints on file for this site. Financial assurance has been received in the amount of $27,500 in the form of a letter of credit. Um, when the CUP was most recently renewed back in January, it was anticipated uh, that the town and zoning committee would hear this again relatively soon. Um, and that is because we had an existing operator where their conditional use permit was set to expire. So they didn't want to have that sunset and go away. So they did a renewal. During that process, now we have a new operator with a new plan of operation. So we're doing an early renewal from today's date, uh, potentially. Uh, the current hours of operation is what was approved back in January would have been from normal crushing, or I'm sorry, normal hours of operation, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, crushing to occur Monday through Saturday, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. between the months of April and November. The newly requested hours, and really this is um, one of the two changes. So the, the one change is to extract additional material uh, and, and do additional expansion within that property. The other is to uh, potentially uh, change the hours of operation and, and crushing hours. So with the newly requested hours, um, the normal hours of operation are requested to be 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday uh, between the months of April and December. Uh, and then crushing to occur once or twice a year from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Saturday between March 1st and December 31st, excluding holidays. Optional crushing hours uh, requested for 24 hours per day, Monday through Saturday, excluding holidays for a period no longer than three weeks per year. Um, as part of the possible conditions for a conditional use permit, we would have to uh, maintain compliance with the NR-135, which is the reclamation plan, maintain compliance with the plan of operation, including normal hours of operation from 6 a.m., 7 p.m., Monday through Saturday, 
Um, and then crushing to occur once or twice per year, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Saturday between March 1st and December 31st, excluding holidays. And then we have that optional crushing hours of 24 hours per day, Monday through Saturday, excluding holidays for a period not to exceed three weeks per year, maintain compliance with the Department of Natural Resources, Chapter 30, and that all other county, state, and federal laws are followed. As by action of the town board, motion was approved. Gary Gethardt, Chair, Gary Anhoff, Supervisor, Andrea Whitworth, Supervisor, no additional comments, signed Bryn Hand, Town Clerk. There were 14 additional notification letters sent out to adjacent property owners. None were returned. That is all. All right, thanks, Jake. All right, need a motion to go into public hearing on CUP number 24-007, please. I think that's a We have a motion by Ms. Hessel, the second by Mr. Schumann to go into public hearing on CUP number 24-007. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. We are now in public hearing. Okay, is the applicant here? Let's step forward. State your name and address, please. Carol Mast, uh, 6506 North Old 27 Road, Stone Lake. So Jay pretty much already laid out what I'm asking for. Uh, the change in volume is nothing more than a guess on my end. Uh, we just purchased this property, uh, currently have a pit operating in Stone Lake. Uh, I don't see the demand for gravel in the area changing. So uh, I don't know what will happen to usage. Uh, we put a number in there, hopefully big enough that we don't have to turn down people needing driveways repaired and house sites done because we didn't ask for enough gravel. You know, like I said, I don't know. I don't, I don't see the usage changing in the county, uh, in the area, but that's, that's why we put the number in there. Uh, the other change was crushing hours. Uh, Thompson's had their own small crusher that they ran, you know, through the whole summer. Uh, we utilize uh, an outside a crushing operation that comes in and, and gets the job done much quicker. So when they come to town, they're normally looking for more hours so that they can get the job done and move on. Normally they're just running one shift, you know, they're running a, a 10, 12 hour day, but if they get behind they'll, you know, they'll ask you or they'll double up and they'll go from that seven to 10, you know, they will run 24 hours a day if they need to, uh, you know, in other locations. So I'm asking for it here because we're surrounded by uh, LP, the pellet plant borders the property. So it's, there's a lot of noise there all the time anyways, because you've got other factories running and it is a, it's a mile from the, from the highway back to the crushing site. So the, the crushing doesn't occur up by the, up by the road there where you where you see the buildings there's sand extraction there but no uh no crushing happening okay anybody uh, mr shumi got a question yeah, <clears throat> mr mass so you're gonna you're planning once or twice a year that you might have to extend your hours right till 10 p.m well that's crushing be, yes those hours would be for during crushing typically they come in once a year i see and so you're asking to crush for 24 hours a day when they're here for a during that time period if they for three weeks yes uh, will that get utilized probably not i'm just i guess i'm asking for the option if they get in a jam you know right now i'm pushing them because i need i need material at both pits they they're currently crushing in stone lake and they're you know their schedule's full and i'm asking for more so you know, I'm trying to give them an op, uh, the the ability to do what I need done in the in the time frame that they have to work with. And Jay, no objection letters to that. Three uh, to twenty four seven. No, nothing that we received on that. Um, I will, you know, state that I don't know if we've seen that type of request before for our other gravel pits, but I don't know if we've also been asked for that type of flexibility on crushing either. Sure. So. Your other pits have twenty four seven crushing they do not nope but they're also not located in an industrial zone that has right. you know 
the other pits aren't compliant or the area isn't compliant with that. Okay. Anyone else have any more questions for him? All right, thank you, sir. All right, is there anyone out there that wants to speak in favor of this CUP? Is there anyone out there that wants to speak in opposition of this CUP? Do we have any hands, Jay? No. Um, anyone online wishing to speak on that? There's quite a few online, so I can't see when hands always pop up, but I don't see any okay. right now. All right. Um, need a motion to come out of uh, public hearing on CUP number 24-007. So move, Chairman. Second. Motion by Mr. Schumann, second by Ms. Wilson to come out of public hearing on CUP number 24-007. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. We are now out of public hearing. This is the discussion action, the town of Hayward conditional use permit number 24-007, owner Hayward Demo LLC and select land holdings LLC. Legal description is previously read into record. The uh, property subject to the non-metallic mineral extraction operation has 83.17 total acres. Uh, and this permit is desired for the early renewal of that non-metallic mineral extraction operation, including rock crusher uh, and hot mix plant. And uh, I guess as the committee proceeds with their discussion and action, um, please reference the uh, possible conditions for approval as well as the fines of fact included in my staff report. Jay, I have a question. Um, with the passage of Act 12, how does this affect our uh, decision making on operating hours? I'm not familiar with what Act 12 is. Becca? Um, which Act 12? I mean, do we, there's different Act 12s, you know, in different years. Um, um, what, what, what statute are you referencing or what the statutory provision was changed? I can't. Well, my understanding was, I think it's on page nine of Act 12, 2023, that um, we cannot uh, rule on any operating hours for uh, mineral extraction. But uh, I'm not a lawyer, and, and this is a friendly... Actually, we're not supposed to have a discussion on this until a motion has been made on the floor. Yeah, I, I can, I'll look at this while you continue your discussion. I'll make a motion to approve CUP 24-007 um, based on the conditions, uh, uh, with the conditions provided by uh, the zoning department one through five and the findings and facts one, two, uh, four, and six. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion by Ms. Saskin, second by Mr. Ringheimer to approve. Uh, Approve number 24-007. Any more discussion? Okay, you want to discuss some more? Or? You said it was the 2023 Act 12? Oh, I should have looked it up more carefully. Yeah, the, I mean, 20, the 2023 Act 12 deals with the personal property exemptions for tax assessment. Um, I'm not aware of any provisions relating to um, mining or restrictions on hours of operation. Um, let me just continue to look at this. Um, if we're referring to the provisions that related to Chapter 66, um, I mean, act it doesn't it, it it doesn't the act does address mining, but it's within chapter sixty six. Um, so let me just go back and look at this again to see if it applies to counties in pursuant to chapter fifty nine. Hang on one 
one second. Linda, we're not in public hearing. Well, I'd rather hear it from them. Thank you for your patience, everyone. I was I was looking up just online, Wisconsin 2023 Act 12, it says, imposes limits on the ability of municipal governments to regulate certain non-metallic quarry operations involving the extraction of non-metallic metal and are used primarily for public work projects or a private construction or transportation project imposes limits on the ability of municipal governments to regulate certain non-metallic quarry operations. I, I'm just questioning. I, no, that's I don't, fine. I don't. No, that's fine. Yeah, so then the question is, and, and I appreciate the, the question, um, the question is whether that provision of 66 applies to county regulations. Chapter 66 is interesting because there are some provisions in Chapter 66 which do apply to counties, and then there's some that don't. Um, so oftentimes you'll see something in Chapter 66, and if it isn't made specifically applicable to counties, um, it's not a legal restriction on the counties. So that's what we need to figure out. Um, and the... extent to which this would, if it does apply to the county, um, the extent to which it impacts this decision, because the legislative background on issues like this are to ensure that there is appropriate supply for um, transportation projects throughout the state. So there may be other particular items in here um, that would act as an exception to um, what the committee is trying to do. So, Mr. Chairman, I don't know if you want to move ahead on your agenda so you don't have to wait for me. Um, we have to vote. We have to vote on it. Stacey, you got a question. Oh, sorry. No. I see where it talks about projects for public works and that those hours of operation um, potentially can't be mandated. It's more of an That's for a public service. works project. So it's actually giving more flexibility to the operator is what it looks like. Why don't you go ahead and vote? And then if I... If I come upon any issues with this, I will, I will mention it. And then you, because you're within the same meeting, we can circle back to this agenda item. Okay. All right. And I guess the one other point I would make is that, I mean, even as the conditions, those were you know, imposed by the applicant. So they've obviously been agreeable to those said conditions. And right now we have a motion and a second for approval, including those conditions. So I, in either case, I mean, if that motion is approved, I, I don't think we have to worry about Act 12 because those were conditions implemented by the applicant. But definitely yeah, something that we'll probably recircle on and, and look at here for future non-metallic mining operations. Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second on the floor to approve the CUP. Any more discussion? Kathy, let's do roll call, please. Kay Wilson. Yes. Tweed Schumann. Yes. Stacy Hessel. Yes. John Righeimer. Yes. Ron Buckholtz. Yes. All in favor. Thank you. <laughs> okay, then Rebecca, if you come up with something, then you'll let us know before we end this zoning committee meeting. You bet. Okay, thank you. Did you want to move into the proposed ordinance amendments right away? Or did you want to take a short break? Let's restart? take a short break because this could be long. It could.
For those online, we'll be taking a five minute recess. Thank you. Okay, we're, I call this meeting back to order. Um, we lost Mr. Schumann, so we're down just to the four of us. We still have a quorum. So I'm ready when you are, Jay. Yeah, so this is a public hearing for Sawyer County Zoning Ordinance Amendment, Section 2.0 for definition, Section 8.2 for procedure, Section 17.0 for zone districts, and the Sawyer County Shoreland Wetland Protection Ordinance, Section 3.4 for prohibited uses, Section 5.1 for minimum lot size purposes, and Section 16.0 of definitions. The proposed amendments are in reference to multi-dwelling development. The proposed ordinance amendment changes can be found on the Sawyer County Zoning website, as well as attached here as part of the agenda packet. Um, I guess before we get into official public comments for the public hearing, I do want to kind of lay out um, kind of some aspects of you know, how we got from point A to point B. Um, there are a few minor changes that I'd be looking at potentially making if this does you know, move on at, at all at this point. Um, and then also go through the town um, comments that we received back as well. So the, the thing that promulgated this entire change um, was really as the definition of, of dwelling unit. Um, so as part of the current zoning ordinance, again, what we have up on the screen is the red line version. And the current zoning ordinance, it's the last sentence of dwelling unit that says only one dwelling unit is allowed per lot. Um, and that has conflicting language when we look at the conditional use permit portions within the zoning ordinance that allows for multi-dwelling development for resorts, for apartment complexes as part of a conditional use permit clause. So when we have a portion of the ordinance that allows an avenue for an individual to do multi-dwelling development, and then we have this definition of dwelling unit that says you only allowed one dwelling unit per lot. The ordinance butts head with itself. And that's been kind of the my head pounding against the desk for the last two years that that just doesn't make sense. Because as of right now, if nothing was to change, I would go back to the definition of dwelling unit and look at that one sentence that only one dwelling unit is allowed per lot. And in essence, that means that there would never be another duplex in Sawyer County. There would never be another apartment complex in Sawyer County. There would never be another hotel, motel, or resort in Sawyer County. Because it says verbatim, only one dwelling unit is allowed per lot. I don't think that is the intention of, uh, of the zoning ordinance, but if that is what Sawyer County wants to, to see moving forward, uh, we can make those necessary changes. Um, as part of other... Um, you know, changes that I've identified as part of version 5.4. Um, I do want to move back up here. Um, as number, this would be as number 31 for dwelling multifamily. Um, what I would want it to end up reading so that there's no conflicting language, it would be as two or more separate dwelling units on one lot. So dwelling multifamily is what I've envisioned that as is having two or more separate units on one lot. Again, you know, this version and, and from what we heard from the towns, we're not going to be allowing multi-dwelling development in the shorelands. This is off water um, development. Uh, but I don't want there to be conflicting language between dwelling multifamily and what a dwelling two family is. Dwelling two family is set up for a duplex where you have one large structure that has two units in the one structure. And that we have right now, that if you're meeting the double requirements of the zone district for RR1 and RR2, and I'll get into the R1 classifications, uh, we would have that as a permitted use. So you wouldn't have to come in and get a conditional use permit approval. Let's say you own one acre of residential somewhere outside of the city of Hayward and you wanted to propose putting up a duplex on it. I didn't think it was necessary for those individuals to have to come in and get a conditional use permit to do that. Uh, so that's where I'd want to make that change dwelling multifamily is that if it's two or more separate dwelling units. So if you wanted to have two cabins on that same uh, example that I gave you, that would require that you'd have to get a conditional use permit to do. But if it says a duplex, that is as a permitted use. Um, the other change 
Um, and this is something that I need to, you know, uh, touch base with, with legal counsel on. Uh, we want to make sure that we really shore up the language um, that any of these illegally created garage units cannot apply to be a resort. Uh, we have multiple scenarios throughout the county where, you know, individuals have created those, you know, living corridors in their garages. And, and what I don't want to allow for that is they say, well, I've had this garage since 1992 and we've had a, you know, overflow sleeping area in there. And now I want to apply for a resort uh, to, to rent both of those. That was never the intention. And if there's any uh, ambiguity in the current draft that allows someone to do that, we need to shore that up and, and really kind of prevent that. Um, I don't know if it's as simple as enough as to insertion of a date, uh, but I was able to find through additional research that in June, on June 20th, 1985, there was a zoning ordinance amendment um, that would have prohibited the placement of uh, more than one dwelling unit on a lot without granting of a conditional use permit for multi-dwelling. When that language was added, you know, going back to dwelling unit and that it states only one dwelling unit is allowed per lot, I couldn't find when and where that was added. I have to assume that it was done probably within the last 10 to 15 years though, um, where that language was added because prior to that, we were seeing conditional use permits for multi-dwelling developments. We were conceding conditional use permits for uh, resorts, uh, even on water. So um, I, I do wanna make sure that we shore up that, again, those garage units do not have an avenue that they were created illegally that can't all of a sudden now be rented out and try to, to rent both of those on one lot, whether it's on shoreland or non-shoreland. Um, and then we also wanna make sure that the conditional use permit portion uh, for the zone district requirements, um, very, I guess, simplistic references that if you are wanting more than you know the one dwelling unit, whether it's for a duplex, whether it's for two separate units, whether it's for three separate units, for each dwelling unit, you need to meet either double the minimum dimensional requirements within RR1 or RR2, double the minimum requirements for either lot width or depth and the area. Uh, so again, if you had a, a lot and it was, you know, 200 feet wide and 400 feet, or I'm sorry, 200 feet wide and 200 feet deep, you would have double the lot width, but you wouldn't have double the lot depth. But if, even with having double the lot width, you'd still have 40,000 square feet and you could apply for two dwelling units on that one lot. Similarly, if you only had 100 feet wide, and at 400 feet deep, you would have double the depth and still the 40,000 square feet. Um, so I wanna make sure that we shore that up as well to make sure that it, it reads cleanly that again, if you're proposing that you wanna place two dwelling units out there with conditional use permit approval, you again need double the minimum dimensional requirements. R1, residential one, is the unique one because within the current zoning ordinance, in order to place additional dwelling units in R1, the ordinance currently says, referenced in section 18 dimensional requirements, says you only need a, a 5,000 square feet of additional land area. Um, that's been in there since the Bill Christman era. I would have to assume that R1 was more so favorable for apartment complexes or for cluster development. So they didn't want to, I guess, penalize a property owner for not having an additional 20,000 square feet to implement another unit. Um, but as you read that each dwelling unit must meet the dimensional requirements pursuant to section 18, that one does kind of work because it, it notes the dimensional requirements in 18. 18 references a double asterisk that says you need 5,000 square feet for each additional dwelling unit in R1. But in the RR1 and RR2, we almost need to add language that says um, that each dwelling unit must meet double the minimum dimensional requirements for lot width or depth and double the area. Uh, so those would be you know, some of the uh, recommended changes that I would have prior to moving this forward. And then I guess I would have to confer with legal counsel if that is something that we would need to bring back to the committee to move forward, or if that's um, something as minute of a change that we could proceed with those changes um, you know, if there was motions to move it forward. Uh, with that being said, those are, uh, again, my kind of comments of, of changes, as well as how we got from point A to point B. Uh, with that, I will read in the town uh, comments that we received.
So for the town of Bass Lake, uh, they approve the approved changes. Uh, purpose would not be contrary to public interest and conforms with the spirit and intent of Sawyer County zoning. It would not be detrimental to the use and enjoyment of others in the community. It would not be detrimental to the water, sewage, or drainage. It would be adequately serving the public. Um, when I sent out these uh, proposed changes to the towns as well, I, I did have you know a summary letter associated with that. And I said, you know, if there are any you know, objections, or if there's something that you don't like with this proposal, please let me know what portions of the ordinance that, that you don't like. Um, Town of Couturier, denied, no additional comments. Thanks. Uh, Town of Draper, they did actually a really nice job. They had uh, quite a bit of different recommendations here. Uh, as a summary of those, um, I might not have the right sheet from them. Do you have their petition one in here, the resolution one that they signed. Yeah. Uh, Town of Draper recommended denial. Um, and the language that I have here is the remaining conflict of the definitions of property classifications and uses uses and the proposed amendments do not resolve conflict or pave a way for a clear implementation of zoning in the future. Uh, they did send additional correspondence and I'll have to look to see where those ended up. But um, I've been in conversations with, with Steve as well um, and he's voiced some of his concerns with the proposed ordinance, which uh, definitely is, is welcomed. Um, Town of Edgewater uh, denied. Um, the board was all for multi-dwelling development for offshore land, but not for increased restrictions to onshore land development. So this one's always a little, um, I guess, different from what we've heard from other towns. Because again, this version, um, you know, previously we sent this out to the towns. The towns didn't want to see multi-dwelling development in the shorelands. And me reading the town of Edgewaters almost seems like they want to keep it in the shorelands. So they actually denied this because it almost went too restrictive now. Uh, Town of Hayward denied uh, all people in attendance of the meeting were opposed to this amendment. General feeling was there was too many inconsistencies in the proposed amendment, but didn't give me any examples of where those inconsistencies were. Uh, Town of Hunter denied all definitions to read one dwelling unit per lot. Uh, and again, that's where I talked about if, if the towns want one dwelling unit per lot, uh, I guess, you know, I, I do have someone here from the, the Sawyer County record. If, if we want to go down the route of one dwelling unit per lot, that means no more duplexes in Sawyer County. That means no new or no new apartment complexes in Sawyer County, no multi-dwelling development, no hotels, motels, or resorts. Uh, if that is the desires of the towns, that's fine. We can implement that, but not having additional opportunities for affordable housing goes strictly against kind of number one rule of the comprehensive plan and that affordable housing is definitely needed here in Sawyer County. Donna Lenroot did not, did not actually deny they had a split vote, so no decision. Um, so we are still not in public comment Set. yet. Set down. Is that correct, Rebecca? Because the motion would fail, but the motion isn't to deny. There is no motion for approval or a motion for denial. I would like to ask legal counsel on this. Thank you. Honestly, folks, I can't hear, and this is exactly why there shouldn't be public comments or public outbursts when you're presenting, Jay. If there are comments, then make them later, um, but they're not being contained in the record and I can't hear them. So if, you, if you'd if you like me to answer now, I can, but I did not hear the question. Yeah, so the, the Town of Lenroot had a motion to approve and that motion got a 2-2 split. So the motion at that point fails and members from the public said if that motion fails, it actually is a denial. So, and I can't really answer that because I don't know what the motion was. Like, I can't just say, yes, if the motion was for, it depends on the way the motion was worded. It depends on 
the specific language of the motion before I can say. I can tell you that under Robert's rules, and again, I don't know what the town's board rules or what their local ordinances say, from a general standpoint under Robert's rules, just because a motion fails um, to do something affirmative, I make a motion for approving a zoning ordinance amendment. If that fails, the opposite does not automatically happen. So if a motion to approve an ordinance change fails, it's not automatic that it's passed and vice versa. That's under the general Roberts rules. Um, but again, I, I can't speak to this instant that was just raised because I, I don't have it in front of me um, or having, I haven't looked at the town's ordinances or rules or whether general Roberts rules are incorporated and so forth. All right. Well, as part of the town of Latin route, they, they check marked the box denial, but they had two no votes on approval and two yes votes on approval. Um, I had thought that that would ultimately be a no decision. Um, and we can circle back. I don't know if it, it that, is necessarily to this it, point, but in that instance, if it's a tie, then the motion has failed. So it, in, I thought what you were saying is if a motion fails, then the opposite automatically happens. And that is not the case. In that instance, how you articulated, and again, I'm going just based solely on what you're articulating, Jay, because I didn't hear the public speak. Um, in an instance where there is a, you said it was a motion to approve? I, I believe so. The motion was to approve and that did not pass. Okay. As if a tie vote. Okay. And then if the, the governmental entity did not take any further action, it was effectively denied because the approval failed. So, so are they the, then also denying the proposed change of the ordinance? You say the motion fails, but does the, the aspects of the, the ordinance also fail for their approval? Wouldn't that be what the motion was for? The motion was for approval, and again, that motion failed, and I understand that. But wouldn't they also then need to make a subsequent motion to deny the proposed change, and then that would also fail as a 2-2 split, and you would ultimately wind up in a stalemate? Did they do that? No, they made no other motions. The motion was for approval, that motion failed, and then that's where they left it at. I mean, they, they could have done that, Jay, um, to make it very clear um, that they were denying. You know, we, we don't know if it would have been a 2-2 logically. Sure, it may have been, but we don't know that, and I don't think we should assume that. Um, again, effectively, the failure to approve when we're looking at, if this is becoming an issue under the question of whether a majority of affected towns approved the ordinance change, then I think it, we have to do a deeper dive on that. Um, and we can talk about that later because that, sure. that may be an issue. But I think for purposes of right now, it's appropriate to um, conclude that that town did not approve the, the ordinance amendment. And I would say they Correct. didn't have to make a subsequent motion for official denial. Fair enough. Uh, so town of land route, you know, check mark the box for denial to to split vote. Um, they want to deal with short term rental issues first, uh, which, again, we do have in, in the pipeline. Um, again, here at town of land route, still one dwelling per lot without exemptions for in-law apartments. So again, they don't want duplexes, apartment complexes, hotels, motels, or resorts moving forward. Uh, Town of Meadowbrook approved. Uh, there was comments that there were um, concerns with sewer and water issues uh, along the lakes and rivers. Uh, Town of Meteor denied. 
stress on the natural resources, language is unclear, especially definition of dwellings, uh, does not keep area rural, and recommend one dwelling per lot. Uh, town of Radisson denied conditional use permits required for resorts next non-conforming version 5.4 number 72 and 86 which would be definitions seems to be the same 17.2 parent b parent 15 the opinion of the Sawyer county zoning committee they would like facts included in with that same for 17.3 parent b parent 16 where it references in the opinion of the Sawyer county zoning committee uh, they would also like facts shown there Town of Round Lake approved as per their comp plan. Um, they did have some additional, um, so the comp, the, the comprehensive, the plan commission, excuse me, uh, they ended up uh, recommending denial. The town board approved as part of the comments received from the plan commission. Uh, the de uh, definition of dwelling unit needs to be refined, uh, creates conflicting definitions within definitions of state statutes uh, overlap of dwelling unit, two-family dwelling unit, multifamily dwelling unit definitions. Section 18, meaning of the word unit, is not defined. The increased lot size requirements for multi-dwelling development is not applicable in RR1 and RR2. And again, that was some of the changes that I had um, you know, requested that we would implement in there. Uh, clarify whether or not changes also apply to tourist rooming houses. Um, and this is not an exhaustive list, rather an example of items that seem to require additional work. Town of Sand Lake denied. Don't like having space above garages. Conflicting terms for two-family homes. Too much misinformation. Lack of enforcement of present rules. Town of Weirgore denied. No additional comments. And Town of Winter approved. Uh, those were the responses that we had uh, gotten back from the towns or the comments that we've gotten back from the towns. Um, I think that's all I have, unless the committee has any other questions of me before we go into public hearing on these proposed changes. Well, with these changes that you want to make here, I guess it's up to the committee if we should proceed or maybe postpone it in the next meeting. But I'm going to leave that up to you, how you guys want to handle that. Um, I guess if Rebecca says we can do it that way and we're legal, I, I'm okay with that. I mean, this has been out there for a long time. And there's just so much negativity going on here. And myself, I'm tired of it. Um, I just want to move on. I understand all the people, what they're trying to do. And that's okay. That's their prerogative. But jumping up out of order, we won't have that no more today. That's not how we run a, a zoning committee meeting. If you want, wait till your turn to speak on your appearance letter. So, how do you guys want to go about this? So, are you asking to bring another version back next month, or are you asking what is the ask here? So, there's some definitely some changes that I want to make sure we shore up before the current version 5.4 would move forward in, in any capacity. Now, it's really a question to legal counsel is if my proposed changes, which again, I can eloquently lay out, if those merit enough of a change as that we need to come back with a new version for a recommendation of approval uh, prior to moving it on, or if that would be something where, you know, that they don't merit enough of a change that we can still proceed with those corrections. Rebecca, you want to answer that for us, please? Uh, sure. Jay, does 5.4 outline your new changes? No. Okay, and I know you went through them. Um, when you you made those changes after the town reviewed correct 
I haven't necessarily made them yet. Uh, it's just from, I guess, some of the comments that I received back from the town, some of the comments I received from general public um, that there's, I don't want to lead to any unintended consequences. And if there's any wiggle room in this proposal that allows for, you know, an illegal garage unit to be included as part of a quote unquote rental for a resort, um, we need to we need to close that loophole because that is not the intention of my proposal. Mm -hmm. um, now, again, if that merits enough of a change or we have to you know dig in there pretty deep to make those corrections, then, yeah, it probably is best that we'd come back with a 5.5 uh, version to solidify that. Um, but again, I'm looking at, you know, specifically definition number 31, renumbered, dwelling multifamily. The language would be for two or more separate dwelling units. But again, that would take out um, the confusion or, or any confliction that that also includes dwelling to family because they are you know, separate aspects. Uh, dwelling to family, again, being duplexes. Um, again, shoring up any language that doesn't allow illegally created garages to be included as part of any rentals. I do not want to see those as, you know, quote unquote, grandfathered uh, dwelling units that someone can say, well, I got away with having living quarters in my garage for over 10 years as part of um, 5969-21T that says, well, I got away with it for 10 years. Now you have to allow me to, you know, consider this as a dwelling unit and rent it out as part of a resort. Um, now, if, if there's, if that's not solidified in this, that is a, a correction that needs to be made because I, I don't think that was anyone's intention. Um, where again, that might be best if it, it does come back as a new version. And then again, as far as the conditional use permit portions, where it talks about um, the dimensional requirements needed. Again, R1 is, I think, okay, because R1 references section 18. Section 18 for R1 states that you need an additional 5,000 square feet for each additional dwelling unit. RR1 and RR2, just state that each dwelling unit must meet the dimensional requirements pursuant to section 18. It doesn't say that you actually need double the minimum dimensional requirements for each dwelling unit. That would include either double the lot width or double the lot depth and double the area for each dwelling unit. Yeah, it gets pretty wordy in there, but that was ultimately my intent. You, you can't start cramming units on a lot that doesn't meet double what you would need for one dwelling. And again, yeah, that can yeah. certainly come back as another version. Um, and we can certainly, you know, certainly have a public hearing as well. If there are other good uh, suggestions to, to add into this. Um, yeah, we've been going on this for a long while, but um, I, I want to make sure that it, it can proceed with through County board at, at this point as well. So, and yeah. ask the towns yeah. if, they, if they have, you know, other objections to this. I really hope that the towns aren't thinking that they only want one dwelling unit per lot period, because again, that, that has some, some really um, strong language in, included in that where again, no duplexes, no apartments, no resorts, hotels, or motels ever again in Sawyer County. So if, if we postpone this until say the next zoning committee meeting, then you make your changes that would have to go back to the towns. So there's, you know, what we send out to the towns is, you know, basically as, you know, what they have for their comments. Um, you know, it's a courtesy that we send this stuff out to the towns. The actual um, statutory requirements is that we would still hold a public hearing and towns could end up having, um, they could submit a, a petition for an objection within 10 days of the public hearing. Uh, if the ordinance was enacted by county board, they would have an additional 40 days to submit a petition to the county clerk that would be in opposition of the proposed ordinance amendments. If 50% of the towns at that point submit that, basically that petition to the county clerk, then the ordinance cannot be enacted. We send out basically a canvassing or a feeling to the towns and asking for their opinions. And again, several of the towns that were in denial didn't give me any opinions. Okay. That's the same thing. Yeah, I just, I think we need to promote building in our community. I mean, it's it's an expensive place to live already, and we have a housing issue. Um, we want to welcome uh, dwellings, no matter the size. I think that we have to be responsible on that. I think we have been responsible on that. Kudos to you for 
going to the town meetings. So with that being said, I, I do think that we need to postpone. We're still working on the ad hoc for the short-term rentals. I think that that would play into this. So I think if we postpone to April, if, if that seems fitting for everybody else, I would approve doing that. Is that enough time for you, Jean? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm okay with that. So. That Are you making that a motion, Stacey? I, I make a motion to table the uh, ordinance amendment to Post April. Postpone it. Thank you. I'll second it. Rebecca has her hand up. As Go ahead, Rebecca. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I would, with Jay's explanation, I would um, definitely uh, recommend that it come back. And I understand that this has been a long process. Um, but the legal requirement is, is that there's any material changes. And, you know, the, the changes, Jay, that you're referring to, um, I think could be construed as material changes. Also, with respect to the illegal use, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the illegal use issue, from a general standpoint, I just want everyone to know that um, simply because there is a change in ordinance does not render an illegal use um, or a non-conforming use um, suddenly legal from this perspective in these certain circumstances. Um, and I hesitate to say that as a general rule because there are so many qualifiers and I don't want it to be misconstrued um, on that point. And, and certainly we can talk about that in more detail, Jay, offline. Um, I have a question. How many towns did approve um, the, the version that they had in front of them? Four. So it was not a majority? No. Okay. Um, and I, I just also want to say for the record that there are very specific legal requirements under 5969-5E, um, 5E, not 5E, uh, sub 3 for the process of towns reviewing um, and acting and the requirements of how the town memorializes their decision. Um, and so we just want to make sure that those um, are attended to. Um, and if there are specific legal questions about that process, I'm happy to answer them. Um, if this, if you do decide to uh, defer till April or postpone till April, have a new version come back, I highly recommend that it uh, you do another public hearing um, and that you send it back to the towns again for consideration. Um, I know again that's extending the process, but the legal process is the legal process. And again, I'm happy to answer any other questions because there's there's and there's a lot more layer layers of legal issues that we've got going on here. Um, and so I don't want to go through those in a lot of detail if um if the committee doesn't feel is necessary and i don't necessarily want to do those in open session either that may be a, a reason for a closed session at a later date of course yes um, so we so we have a motion and a second to postpone the public hearing until april with additional changes send it back out to the towns prior to which is which is fine um, I guess I'll ask the chair as well as the rest of the committee, do you want to take any additional public comments on the proposal at this time? I know we've, we've done this multiple times, uh, but I'll leave that on, on you. No, I don't think we need to hear any more at this time. Uh, if we're going to bring it back. It's going to be a public hearing. Could, it, could I ask? I think, I think it would be beneficial just in case there's anything that we need to add. So we're not coming back another month. I mean, I know, I know that it's, I know that it's a long, and we probably heard the same thing um, okay. throughout. But I think it's beneficial in case that there has to be anything right. included. I agree with Stacy. I think we should hear the people that are here. Okay. All right. I agree. Then. All right. We didn't open this up for public hearing, though, did we? 
So it wouldn't necessarily be as the official public hearing. Um, it would be that the committee is going to accept additional public comments on the proposal. But we still need to take a vote. So they can take sure. Yep, yep, yep. Vote. Yes. Did you want roll call or did you want to just follow the Do a roll call, then that way it's still here. Um, yes. Stacy. Yes. John. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And then Rebecca, you had your hand up there. You're muted. Yeah. Um, I think your agenda says this is a public hearing. So I, I definitely agree that you should move forward in, in taking public comments pursuant to that public hearing. Um, so effectively, you are going to allow public comments. Um, but I just wanted to be clear that because it's a public hearing on the agenda, that you are engaged in a public hearing um, and you need to stick with what's in front of you on your agenda. Yeah, well, they ultimately postponed the official public hearing until April's zoning committee meeting, but they're going to be accepting additional public comments on this proposal. Okay, Does that and work? That's, what the, that's what the motion was for, was to... Yes, yes. Hearing. Yes. Okay, got it. Okay. Does that work? Um, yeah. It's just not I, the official public hearing process. We postponed that, but we're going to take additional public comments at this time. Yes, you can do it. You can do it that way. And I, again, I think um, given all of the circumstances, the, if you take the public comment, that would be the most appropriate. Um, the issue being there's a question of whether um, a public hearing could necessarily be postponed because of the notice requirements. But again, I think um, in these circumstances and in this situation, um, you the, the motion is, is appropriate. One of my other questions is, Jay, when we send this out to the towns, are they going to get it in plenty of time to yeah, I mean, ultimately, we'll have to get this out within the next week or so to get it on their April agendas. Okay. All right. But the changes. Okay. And, just... Jay, make sure that the the next public hearing is properly noticed, so effectively treat it as a new public hearing. Yep. Okay. So are we in public hearing now? On this uh, we're in public comment. Public, public comments, I mean. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, we're going to take public comment. You're going to get three minutes and you're only going to get to speak one time. Um, ultimately, the first one I have a hand up here online from Liz Klein. Hi, Jay. This is actually Chris. Can you hear me? This is uh, actually Chris Klein. I'm with Liz Klein here. Yep, we can you hear me? Okay, great. Um, uh, first off, I'd like to say uh, thank you for doing a 5.5. Uh, rather than just trying to uh, incorporate the changes into the existing document. Um, when you were at our meeting, uh, Steve Binding had mentioned uh, the idea of like a, a grid or a chart to kind of summarize uh, the different uses and uh, rules so that like a, a, a developer or property owner could be able to quickly look and make sense of what their options are based on their current zoning uh, and you had mentioned that that was going to be something that you would work on after this gets uh, approved. Uh, I think, I know it's probably hard to do given the time constraints, but even if you could come up with just a, an ugly Excel spreadsheet that's not pretty, uh, that could kind of uh, incorporate that summary into like a table, I think that might help. Uh, the towns understand exactly what this ordinance is saying that can can or cannot be done. Uh, it just might be an, a, a better way for them to digest the information. So I think if you could somehow get that incorporated with the next proposal, it may actually help things. Or on the other hand, it could make things worse. I don't know. But uh, sometimes just being able to see stuff in a different format, uh, it, may, it may summarize everything uh, in a way that people can digest. Thank you. Uh, next, I have Jenny Chabak. Good morning. Jenny Chabak, 10363N McLean Road. Um, I'm on the plan commission for the town of Round Lake, but I'm here just representing myself. 
First of all, I want to commend everybody who's been working on this. I know it's been a, a hard road to get here. It's very close. Please, I want the committee and also the county board to understand it's worth the effort to go through this one more time. The changes, specifically the ones that Jay spoke to, were brought up by several towns. I had a conversation with him about one of them, and I think that if you make those changes and then get the, those represented in the meetings, that this will be a win-win for the county all the way around. Thank you. Uh, next, I have Douglas Kurtzweil. Douglas Kurtzweil, 11055 W Arrow Road, Hayward, Wisconsin. You're getting close. Uh, I would recommend, though, that uh, you don't just slap something together in a week and then send it out and have the people dealing with election and everything else and then expect them to have the opportunity to run it past their council and have responses from the towns back by the April meeting. I think if you figure having responses from the town in time for the May meeting, the towns will have an, an adequate opportunity to, uh, to get things uh, done and, and, and to, to check with council. In this go around, uh, Meadowbrook had to have a special meeting and Ojibwa got shut out completely because again, uh, tribal plans by board members and they're out of the area and plans made long ago. You're getting real close. What I hear, clean up those definitions, make them a little bit more understandable, make them so that the average person can, can get a good idea of what they can or cannot do. Uh, and then 17.2B15, uh, uh, oh my goodness, uh, conditional use, anybody can rent one. They've got two or three old cabins on a lot, they can rent one. And uh, I think for operating a resort, especially a robot resort in an R1 zone should take a variance rather than a conditional use. Bar is much higher, variance allows needs, conditional use allows wants. There's a world of difference. And then also uh, the noted uh, with multi-unit development is allowed in shoreland, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, granting or resurrecting non-conforming use, uh, an expired non-conforming use on a legal non-conforming structure. Uh, I think Rebecca referenced it, and I do believe the, uh, the citation would be 59.69 parent 10 parent AM. And uh, that's gotta be cleaned up. And I believe someone said uh, texts and charts, you bet it'd help a lot. And also, I think a lot of towns weren't fully cognizant of the fact that some of this applies in the shoreland zone, but not in the non-shoreland zone. And so some clarification and give them adequate time to run it past their council. And uh, if we work together, I think we can get a winner and probably get it up to, uh, well, get it approved by this committee in May to be sent to the county board by June. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Ron, I apologize, but the point of order, my understanding of the Roberts is uh, anyone- Yeah, but you didn't have to all of her stuff. I mean- you Well, no, I didn't, it was a point of order. And that's the way Roberts says it should be done. Thank you. Um, next, I have Linda Zilmer. Linda Zilmer, Edgewater property owner and uh, village of Birchwood resident, a resident. I think Jay highlighted that he ha has heard from the towns what a lot of the major concerns were. Um, I do have a concern with, um, it, and I do believe that this is still a public hearing. The, t the video will probably show that the motion was to postpone action till next month, but I, whether it matters or not, or semantics, I think this is a public hearing. Uh, Jay suggested um, changing dwelling multifamily uh, to be separate dwelling units. And I just kind of want to show maybe along the lines from the comments of uh, the town of uh, Draper, under state statutes, these, this with all three units attached is a, is a dwelling multifamily. They're attached. You, I don't see where that's provided for in your ordinance because now if you make them all detached, 
this is your scenario. So please think about that a little bit more. I don't think that solves it. I want to also explain the situation with the um, Edgewater decision. What they liked was the fact that the denser development um, opportunities were offshore land. Uh, after some discussion, both during and after the meeting, uh, there was a discussion, do you really need to have multiple dwellings on one lot? And pretty much the decision in the discussion was no. If you're gonna have a dwelling, and again, the definition of dwelling is up for discussion too. It should have its own individual lot. I think also before this goes back out to the towns, there should be a clarification between dwelling unit and a dwelling. In your own ordinance right now, a dwelling or a permitted use in all three zone districts can be one or two families. So that could be that your in your dwelling definition says one or more, but one or two family permitted uses in all three zone districts, this is what's allowed right now. The, the other part of Edgewater's comment has to do with something you haven't discussed yet, which is a new class of uses called prohibited uses. And in the prohibited uses, the draft that you have out there now prohibits two family homes and three family homes. And that takes away, so if that were to go through, if somebody had 15 acres and a thousand feet of shore land, they could only build this and they couldn't build basically what would be like a two level home or a two family. And that is really taking away property rights. So there's a lot more to what version 5.4 um time's up linda finish her up please okay thank you i just think that before a uh, version goes out to the towns again that this committee should see it before it gets released to the towns and then just like you did with prior prior version allow for some more email input into uh the zoning department to consider things like what i just said about the prohibited uses thank you okay thank you. Can I ask a comment to her, or is that not acceptable? I would say it's okay. So, Linda, I have a, I have a question for you. Because in the beginning of your, of your comments, you said that, that you'd be almost in favor of only having one dwelling unit per lot. But then you showed an example of a duplex, which is... I'm Two sorry, units. if I said dwelling unit, I didn't mean dwelling unit, I meant dwelling. Okay. So so let's, yeah, and I think this is where people, especially where the last round where a lot of towns were opposed, I think there was some confusion about the change between a dwelling unit and a dwelling, and I did not finish my thought because right now you could, by state statutes, say a dwelling is a one or a two family, and that's almost how our zoning ordinance reads now because the number one permitted use across all three residential zone districts are one or two families. And so, yeah, even that's what I'm saying. I think a lot of people are con are confused and maybe if it was just one dwelling per lot, that is acceptable, whether it's a one or a two. Or it, three that, or a four, no, okay. No, no, multifamily, no. So again, to be really clear um, amongst the committee and before it goes out to the public, really be clear what a dwelling unit is and what is a dwelling? Is the dwelling the same as a dwelling unit one, or is a dwelling unit a one or a two, like it is in state? So you'd like to see the allowance of a duplex in Shoreland? With the language that is not in there right now. I, don't say what I like. This is a decision across the whole county. What I'm saying is possible is right now, I don't believe that section 18 is really clear that it requires double those dimensions in areas. Oh, and that's one of the changes I wanted to make. Yeah, but, and so this is what I've been arguing for a year now is that the language isn't in there. And, and so that is this discussion across the county that needs to happen. Does the county want to see a duplex allowed? And then also, what is a duplex? And, the, and, and really it gets into this whole accessory dwelling unit. If you have a two-story cedar chalet on the lakeshore, with two complete dwelling units, one on a main level and one on a lower level, is that a two family or is that a single family with an accessory dwelling unit? And I bet you there's a lot of them out there that could become non-conforming. And so would, would people across the county say, hey, you know what, we kind of want to allow that? 
And it, should it only be on 20,000 square feet or should it be on 40,000 square feet? Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things that I had hoped that this discussion would start. There's Great, a lot to think you. about. Thank you. Ben, three minutes. Uh, Benjamin Kurzweil, 16040 W West Lane, Hayward, Wisconsin. I'm also a candidate for the supervisor position in the town of Hayward. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Jay for mentioning the accessory dwelling, uh, the houses above garages, about the 10-year rule, because right now, it, according to state statutes, any illegal building that was built more than 10 years ago is technically legal. That's state statutes. I also want to thank Rebecca for recommending that any changes go back to the towns. I, I think that's a great idea. One of the main concerns I heard at the town of Hayward in particular was that there is no regulations or enforcement of short-term rentals as of now, especially when it comes to septic requirements. Now, I have attended the last tourist rooming house committee, and there's talk of that. Doing this before the TRH committee comes out is getting the cart in front of the horse, and I still feel that the majority of towns with even slight wording, are concerned about who's going to enforce this and what the rules are when it comes to septics and occupancy, because that has not been set. We need to set those things first before we potentially open up another 500 to 1,000 short-term rentals in the county. That is what is a major concern among the residents of Surrey County. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. Anyone else out there want to speak? Anyone online wishing to speak, please raise your hand. Or just start talking, I guess, if you can't find the hand button. Go ahead. Head up podium. Yep. State your name. Yeah, Frank Zufall from Surrey County Record. Jay, I thought at one time you were talking about creating a definition for resorts that would include um, somebody who owned successive adjacent parcels, um, say three or four parcels, would be considered a resort. Um, and I think at the last ad hoc meeting for the short-term rental, somebody mentioned something to that effect, that like if you had three or four, that would be considered a resort, or maybe it was over four, I don't know. Is that still in play or was that taken out or? Not exactly. So we, we did kind of take that out in that, you know, if they're on their own separate lot, they'd be viewed as their own separate structure on there. So if you had, and again, that's something that you could do now and you'd almost have to do it. If you had 300 feet of frontage, you'd have to break that into three separate lots and you could place a dwelling unit on each separate lot. Um, the current definition of a resort um, for the proposal would look at it as that you're only allowed the, the one, uh, again, on shoreland, uh, it would be that one dwelling unit per lot. So that would not be viewed as a resort. And I do not believe that's even included as part of the draft TRH ordinance, that that wouldn't need special you know, resort approval because it's a separate unit on a separate lot. Um, we then started the snowball uh, approach with, with condominiums and condominium plats. That is something where if you're renting more than one condominium unit on a condominium plat, that would be viewed as a resort because it's as part of that same plat. Um, we started looking at the schematics of, okay, you know, you got the two units there and you split the lot, you know, yes, you're renting both of those. It's one owner, you know, is that a resort? And then it's, okay, what if there's a, you know, one unit here and then someone else owns the lot in the middle and then the next one over, what if they're kitty corner you start getting the language, okay, they have to be immediately adjacent. What does that mean? So we just said it's going to be really difficult to kind of put that type of wording in. So we wouldn't view that as a resort if it's a single unit on a single lot. Okay. Thanks, Jay. Anyone else want to speak? Okay. We need a motion to come out of that public hearing, don't we? I'll make a motion to come out of public okay. hearing. Got a motion by Ms. Hassel and second by myself to come out of public hearing on this uh, Sawyer County Zoning Amendment. All in favor say aye. All opposed? Motion carried. We are now out of public hearing. I want to thank you people out there. I, I appreciate your comments. We do. All right, Jay. 
Um, I know, Rebecca, you have your hand raised. I don't know if you want to oh. state something else here. Yeah, just before we close, I wanted to circle back on the quarry question. I yeah, just... we, we, I got you marked here, Rebecca. Okay, <laughs> thank you. You bet. Okay, number six. Yeah, so ultimately this was for a preliminary plat review. We have received an owner request for the postponement of that preliminary plat review. They are working. Um, so this is actually as a, I don't know if I've talked to the committee about this yet or not, but for those that don't know that there is a, uh, a larger subdivision plat that has been proposed at this point by Jeremy Hill. Um, he's referencing this uh, subdivision as the preserve uh, this uh, focuses around the Mosquito Brook flowage off of Highway 77, which would be just north of Geist Road, uh, looking at either 106 or 107 lot plat proposal and it actually extends across two separate towns, town of Round Lake, town of Hayward. Uh, he has been meeting with the towns uh, as to kind of their wishes and desires, specifically focusing around public versus private roads and whether or not the towns want to accept these as public roads and then having to do the maintenance and plowing of those roads or if he can keep them as private roads built to town road specs. So uh, he wished to postpone the preliminary plat review uh, pending additional town conversations on the roads, because ultimately if, if the towns are adamant they want them as public roads, uh, that changes how the plat is actually made. He has to designate them as public roads. Uh, there's different irons that would need to be in because you're actually dedicating that road back to the town versus private than the landowners would own to the middle of the road. So uh, there's some um, different issues he's having to work through. So uh, at, at this point, as part of that, um, I, I would just be accepting a, a motion to postpone the preliminary plat review. I know Rebecca's not going to like this, but I don't have a date certain. So it would just be to a date to be determined. Okay. Uh, Ms. Cecil? I'll make a motion to postpone the preliminary preliminary plat review to a date to date. We have a motion by Ms. Cecil, a second by Mr. Righeimer to postpone uh, the public hearing for county subdivision plat review. All in favor say aye. All opposed. Motion carries to postpone. Uh, then in new business, and before Rebecca circles back on uh, Ms. Wilson's comments about the, the gravel pit issues, um, I did get a request from the town of Bass Lake um, looking at um, our recently added language for the uh, exempt storage sheds. So we carved out a provision because we were seeing a lot of these little sheds pop up. Most of the time, 95% of the time, they are involved in someone that's camping on vacant land. We said, well, if you're going to have a camper out there, we don't really want you to just kind of, you know, store your junk under some tarps or try to cram it under the camper. You know, why don't we allow for up to a 144 square foot shed on vacant land? Um, Got to meet setbacks. You need to get a permit. Um, one of the other conditions that we put in there for the exempt storage sheds is that they wouldn't be allowed in platted subdivisions. Um, Platted subdivisions would include areas like Northwoods Beach. Um, it would include areas like the proposed plat that we, you know, just postponed. And the town of Bass Lake had ultimately requested that we would remove that provision uh, of that because they are seeing quite a few people requesting uh, storage sheds specifically in that Northwoods Beach subdivision. Now, ultimately, in order to you know, meet the exemption of the storage shed, you still need a lot that contains a minimum of 20,000 square feet. So you're not gonna see sheds popping up on those single, uh, they're actually 30 by 100 lots or 3,000 square feet. Uh, but that is a request that I received from the town of Bass Lake. I wanted to bring it uh, up under new business to see if the committee wanted to uh, potentially see a draft uh, process for an ordinance amendment change to remove the condition that exempt storage sheds not be allowed in platted subdivisions. Appetite of the committee. Is that common for each township? I mean, not yeah, it, it would it would be across all towns. The town actually proposed it that it would only be an exempt storage shed for those that have a town of Bass Lake camping license. And I, I contacted both the town chair and the uh, chair of the planning commission. And basically said, I, I can't carve something out unique for your camping provisions at the town level. And what I can do is remove the requirement that storage sheds aren't allowed in platted subdivisions, but that's going to be countywide. Um, and they said, yeah, proceed with asking committee is, you know, is, is that something that they'd be interested in or not? Uh, to me, I, 
I necessarily didn't see the need for it to be in there or not. I know platted subdivisions are more so for um, you know, residential buildings, houses. So why would you need, you know, a storage shed exemption for that? Uh, but for those that, <laughs> I mean, you guys are well aware as, as well. I mean, Northwoods Beach is is different. It's weird. Um, yeah. it, weird is, I guess, the <laughs> nicest word I can say for it, just because of how, it's, how it was developed. You know, again, you have these 30 by 100 lots and in order to do anything in the town of Bass Lake Northwood subdivision, you still need a minimum of a seven lot configuration, which would be 21,000 square feet. So if someone's able to gain all those lots and wants to either camp on it or just, you know, have a small storage shed because, you know, they come up in the summer and whatever they may do. I didn't see the need that that platted subdivisions needed to be in there, but um, that was something that we we kept it in there. So. I'm just asking the committee if they want to see a draft proposal on a proposed ordinance amendment that would remove the storage shed exemption to allow it in platted subdivisions. Right. Are you hearing from any other townships is my point. I don't no. want to start cherry picking each township. No, it's so. just the town of Bass Lake that um, had proposed it over to me. And I, I think it really kind of came from their road supervisor um, that was seeing quite a few requests for him. And he basically said, well, I can't, uh, I can't give you a storage shed exemption here because you're in a platted subdivision. We have seen a few others via the county at, at the zoning department. Those are wanting to put in a, a storage shed and we have to tell them, no, uh, unfortunately you, you live in this platted subdivision that had 13 lots on the Radisson flowage. But the person across the street that's not in a platted subdivision, they can have one. They can have one. I, don't, I think that it's fine to entertain that. It doesn't I mean we're not assuming that it's going to pass or fail. So I think just entertaining it would be fine. Yep. I agree. Adam. Yeah. And ultimately it would be, you know, something we'd send out to the towns for their, their comments and opinions on it. And we would hold an official public hearing as it would be a zoning ordinance amendment. So I'll queue that up um, with everything else with the proposed multi-dwelling development. I may uh, punt that for a few months just because Although it's not that hard of a change, so maybe I do just include it as part of next month's agenda. Okay. All right. All right, Rebecca, we're back to you. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the time to take a look at this. And I appreciate the question um, because we always want to make sure that what the committee is doing, obviously, is within um, its statutory authority. So under 660441, um, it does apply to counties. Um, so counties are included in the definition of political subdivision. However, the restrict the county's ability to restrict hours of operation only arises in certain circumstances. Um, and I won't go into all of those circumstances, um, but generally the, the most important consideration is if that um, operation, that, that business that is doing its operations, is going to be producing um, product that is in a public works project um, that is engaged in night construction or in the case of an emergency. Um, the other distinguishing factor in this situation is that your applicant approved um, and agreed with that condition. So that's another important factor. Um, and then I also was able to locate um, the Ledge Council memo on that legislation. And what I'm telling you is consistent with that. Um, fortunately, I was able to get in touch with Andy as well, and he concurred, which I appreciate because he was actually involved in um, the drafting of some of Act 12. So you are good to go. Oh, okay. Thank you, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on here. Um, any other new business? Is there any other new business anybody want to bring up here? Nope. Okay, if not, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank the audience for their input. Thanks to the committee for their input. And if there's no more business, we are adjourned. Thank you.